there's an Antarctic octopod that can survive very, very cold temperatures, well below freezing. And scientists are positing that the reason this is is because of a blue dye in its blood, hemocyanin. Now, why does this work? Why does that blue dye make its survival, like, happen in such cold weather? So it's, it's, it's a pigment in blood called hemocyanin, blue, right, cyanin? Blue. Um, uh, <laughs> you think back, blue way, blood. way back, think back to high school biology. You remember learning about hemoglobin? So this is a molecule that helps oxygenate the blood. It helps maintain enough oxygen necessary to keep the tissues healthy. So hemocyanin has a similar effect, but it's specifically in, in this octopus, mm -hmm. there's, there's like one Antarctic octopus that has a different version of hemocyanin that actually allows it kind of to work as an antifreeze for this, for this octopus. And the reason that researchers think that they've evolved this, um, this pigment in their blood is because they aren't very fast moving creatures. And so they have to kind of withstand major shifts in their kind of temperature in their local environment because they're not migratory. Mm -hmm. So as it gets colder and colder and colder, they need to be able to withstand those, those changes to cold temperatures and then get warmer again. And this pigment seems to do the trick. Um, and this pigment doesn't really appear in other animals or other octopuses that are in different regions of the world. Well, so they, it seems like they do have hemocyanin, but, but this specific octopus has More? a form of hemo, uh, hemocyanin that is different from the one that's possessed by octopi. Octopi? Yeah, octopi. octopi. I think so, that live in warmer climates. So okay. this is an adapt, uh, you know, an evolutionary adaptation to living in these Antarctic regions that allows it not to freeze to death when it's down there. Um, are there other creatures who have evolved with this kind of hemocyanin? I would assume so. I mean, honestly, I don't know because I don't really study. Um, you uh, don't study, I don't study Antarctic the, animals. No, I don't. I don't. I don't really study marine life at all. Um, I'm kind of not an animal biologist. I, I studied the brain. So, uh -huh. but um, but I, w I would assume so. So, so obviously, the really interesting thing and the really great thing about life on this planet is that it all has evolved to fit within these really interesting niches, right? Mm -hmm. And so specifically, this octopus lives in a really cold area, and specifically this octopus can't have the migratory patterns that almost all birds and fish really have, which is to get to warmer climates during the winter and come back during the summer. But I would be interested to see if hemocyanin is common in, you know, uh, Arctic penguins, in even some larger mammals, and, and if it has this kind of uh, mutated form, mm -hmm. this, this interesting adapted form. But it looks like this is a pretty new um, discovery, so we might not know because researchers may have never looked for this type of cyanin, uh -huh. this type of hemocyanin before.